Um, I guess one of the questions we asked about your favorite sport and then the MMA came up. So I'm like yeah. more curious about that. So um, can you tell me more about that and like th that this beautiful overlap that you shared? Uh, I, I like to hear that. And when did that start for you? MMA? Yeah. Technically, the, 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 the draft, when I was younger, who wasn't fascinated with Muhammad Ali? You know what I mean? So I I was the, I, I shadow boxed a lot when I was young, da, da, da. and I would just like on the court imagining invisible people. I'm in my house, and I'm undersized, and you living in the ghetto, <laughs> right? And then you're thinking about I just because I always dislike bullies. You know what I mean? And so you got a mother, right? You don't have a father, you know. So you're thinking early about protection, defense. You know, and, and so watching Muhammad Ali, I would I would I would do that a lot. We used to organize little boxing matches in the yard. And I talk about a little bit of that in the book, you know, and, and do that in, in front. So that's what kind of brought it on and Bruce Lee. Who don't love Bruce Lee? Right? So you watch an end of the dragon and, and I would be in the house like going to, I mean sweating. So years progressed. I'm in the league at the time. And at the time I was married, I'm having children. I think what at the time I may have had two children. I said, man, I gotta, I wanna take it up a notch. So I went, I used to drive to, there's a place called Diaberville right outside of Biloxi. And I met this guy, Parham, was this Robert Parham. He was my first teacher. So he was teaching me Kempo Kambatai. You know, kind of like, you know, a lot of stuff that, it's mixed, but it's Bruce Lee does. But then there's a guy named John Dixon came in there. And I've, uh, Rich Clemente, who was on one of the shows, and they they took it to a whole nother level. It was like Kyo Combat, I mean, uh, uh, Kyo Cook Shin and Russian Sound. We learned a lot of stuff and got to the point where we would like, we would train with no gloves, but we wouldn't hit in the face. So you hitting shoulders, whatever they give you. Pop, pop you hitting ribs, but you find out like, wow, the more you get, no wonder these guys are able to you know, sit here like this, get hit, get hit a few times and pop, take some punches because your body, your, your, your bones calcify, your body toughens. Yeah. So you're able to take more hits, yeah. you know, before you go down, I say, wow. So I feel, you know, I fell in love with it. Yeah, yeah. And then just to see little guys coming in there, like thin, like you look at them on the street, like, this guy into and so you get into the dojo and say, I want you to, I want you to spar against him. You, you're not striking, but yeah. we, you're going you gonna to grapple. Man, them little jokers, man. Pop, pop, pop. Get under there before you know they got you. <laughs> and you get mad. Yeah. Say, oh, no, 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 I can't. No, 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 no. So that just kept me in I'm competitive. <laughs> you know, so that's how I fell in love with it. You know, it matches your personality because... Like y'all see how dram dramatical I am on the run. That's just my personality. My children say, "Dad." <laughs> I'm me too. I mean, I'm I'm really loud and like uh, they say, you just need to calm down, man. I act stuff out too. So I know. Sometimes I, know. I gotta force myself. Too passionate. They, uh, you know, like because people who are really physically strong and and they, you know, like very confident. They're the most calm. They're like. You know, you don't know they actually have that skill. You see on the street, you're like, dude, I could take this guy. And then you realize, like, what? Like, this You learn too very quick in those moments. And I've never really been a person to underestimate, but sometimes just the mind, right, you see, and it goes there. Not that you intend, it's just like, nah. But especially when you're in no you it takes it to it like no definitely don't underestimate no one my, yeah my brother has a security company um and my brother is the most fearless person i know seriously like he just i wish i could just pick up that fear i mean i grew up in fear right like you got you know grew up in sudan i was talking you know yeah, yesterday yeah, it was like you. we got spanked like for everything till high school till senior year like we we had a guy in high school their job was to like literally like 
you know, uh, still yeah, yeah, you as a student? basically, yeah. So wow. fear was is is you know that's the driving. So my brother grew up here. He's fearless, man. He grew up in the hood. Like he he just built that confidence, and so he has a security company naturally, right? Like, and he he says most people talk a lot, and oh, people yeah. who talk they are like usually most insecure insecure Often exactly times, yeah T- take take uh, habib for example if you didn't know who he was you just saw an average man average outfit walking you'd be like well, whatever some very quiet very humble in the way he talks the way he walks the way he his demeanor very humble but you know you want to knuckle up with habib you know he'll take on 15 of us 30 of us at once i think most people who this is my honest opinion like even whether it's nba football players you're gonna have arrogance you're gonna have people to step out the box. But I think most people who have gone through serious training, you know what I mean, and you've competed against people on and off, you know that at any moment, no matter how good you are, you can you can lose a fight, you know, things cannot go your way. To to go through all of that, putting your body and your mind through all of that day in and day out, most people have a humility about themselves. Yeah. Every now and then you're going to have a bad apple where they're arrogant and they're talking. But I agree. I, I say this all the time. Like even when I come across people, man, I met such and such. I said, we're human. Everybody have. I, I try to give people grace. Everybody have their day. I said, but by and large, I think most people, like even in the NBA, I said most people are relatively good people. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're going to be kind. They're going to be soft-spoken for the most part. Everybody can be triggered. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, but – but I, I believe humility is all you get way more out of life from being humil- uh, humble. Yeah, humble. And, and, and like, you know, subhanAllah, like that's how he, he does his job. Like he he knows most people, they talk the big talk, but they don't back it up. That's and right. the quiet ones, that's the ones that he worry about. Like like the ones who are who don't say much. Mm-hmm. The McGregor fight a few years ago. Yeah, that guy was barking <laughs> loud, and he was trying to like get Habib to you know get in on that like pre-fight. I don't know all this like PR stuff. Habib was like, "Nah, yeah, I'll, I'll see you in the cage." Yeah, I'm not about that. In in his case, uh, McGregor, he talks and backs it up too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, I'm not undermining. He does. He does. He's I'm not undermining. So, no, no, no. I'm a fighter. Some people, some people do both, but it's still always better. Yeah. Then carry yourself. Look, man. Yeah, exactly. Because then you find, too, when things don't go your way, not that this should be why you should do it just because it's the right thing to do, but when you're humble about something and when it doesn't work out, people want to come and support you and assist you more yeah. than if you were arrogant. Well, good for you. Yeah. You you you, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. need to go through that yeah, type yeah, of thing. Yeah. So remember Obama was saying one time, uh, he was saying, you don't hear a rich person saying, going walking around saying, I'm rich, right? Like, or wearing like a gold, you know, this huge gold chain. It's like, if you're trying to show off you're rich, that means you're not rich. But there is people who are rich who talk smack about being rich, but that, they're not the, that's not your normal Joe. He, as human, if you are, well, if Allah gave you a lot of wealth, you're usually trying to hide it. You, you, you don't want people to know that I have a lot of money, you know, you try to hide it. So, and that's that goes with you know physical strength or even you know uh you know knowledge not the most knowledgeable people i've heard like they're the most humble and they always say i don't know anything and it's like oh that's the guy that's the guy when i'm there. i don't know way more than i think i know <laughs> yeah, right because no, they realize like it's like and it's no it's not fake humility yeah it's they understand like literally man yeah I, you know how long it take took me to get here yeah. and it made me realize how much i don't you know, you think, oh, how much I know, how much I don't know. <laughs> you realize you're, you're a drop in an ocean, and it's like that you've arrived then, right? A drop in not only an ocean, but whatever oceans exist in the galaxies <laughs> yeah. on top of that. Right, right. You, the smallest drop. Exactly. You know Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, my so, no, no, humility is definitely part of it. But let me play devil's advocate. Yeah, sure. There has sure. to be a balance, right? Because mm-hmm. if I'm just humble all the time, humble all the time, and somebody's just, you know really run in their mouth and or whatever i'm the domain expert like i'm really the best at my craft and my art like at some point i need to say yo like i'm the best suited person for this not out of wanting to be in that position but just naturally i know what i'm talking about how do you balance that out i wouldn't confuse i, I sometimes we confuse humility mm. 
You know, the fact that you embrace the fact that Allah has gifted you with something, don't mean you lack humility. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's it's okay. Like, oh no, Allah blessed me. Allah says He's given some more strength than others, some this more than others, right? So. He's recognizing that we should recognize. There's some, you know, he said, ask those who know, mm -hmm. you know. So there are things that we have. Yeah, we should embrace it, but it's how you go about doing that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That doesn't mean because you said, no, I'm, I'm the Lord. Yeah. Allah has blessed me. I, I'm, I'm a pretty good basketball player, right? So it's always the balance, I agree. And sometimes you have to, it's, it's good to let people know, to see that confidence. Yeah. You know, it doesn't mean you you lack. Sometimes people, I think, can go overboard with humility to where it's almost like a f false humility. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, it's actually, I, I have an example for this. Yeah. Um, like in prayer. Like, you know, like, especially like, you know, and somebody's, you want somebody to lead the prayer and like the imam is not there and everybody pushes everybody else. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And I, I, I was always humble. Like, I'm, just, I'm not going to lead, man. Like, I, I know I'm not the most qualified. And then one day I just somebody butchered the salah bro like like went in there and like oh, and i was and then some guy came and gave it to me he said look man it's your responsibility to step up if there's no one else and you know you're qualified you got to step up and you gotta and you don't you can't wait for people to beg you and all that you gotta just go and just do it and that kind of humbled me because i'm i was from that camp that always held back yeah you know but at the same time like i also think it's important to let your like like tiger said let your clubs speak for you yeah you go your i was gonna say that your actions speak for <laughs> yeah you. like like it's like you know what if if the person in front of me does not recognize and not interested like then i don't even i don't even deserve they don't deserve me or what i know right um it depends on what we're, what we're talking about obviously what's the goal where you right. are and all that um there are certain er areas like in our faith like you have to step up, like um, you know. Um, but a lot of times, you just you just gotta let it be, you know. Yeah, like if dude is gonna butcher the salah, like yeah, yeah, you gotta yeah, step yeah, up. Yeah, you gotta step you up. Know? Yeah. I was I was training a young man. He's in the NBA now, named Malcolm Brogdon. Okay. Plays in the NBA. Uh, trained him two years. Very humble guy. Still humble. Um, and I was training. I, I was training him a couple of years. He ended up becoming, I think, Atlanta in high school, the Player of the Year twice or something like that. One particular practice, <laughs> you know, because I'm out there, I'm just going through the motions, showing him things, never really go, pl playing him. And one day, speaking of, he said, Coach, you washed up, you don't have it anymore. And I looked, and at first I said, I, I said, I said, I said, I, I said, huh? He said, you what? And then I'm, I'm, cause I'm trying to gauge his facial expression to see if he's joking or yeah, serious. Yeah, yeah. And I saw where he was serious. And I said, you serious? He said, man, yeah, you can't. <clears throat> now that's when the trigger. Yeah. Right. I didn't yell, I didn't scream. <clears throat> I said, let's play pickup. This is and I don't talk like this, but now I'm like, you've insulted me. Right. Anything can happen. You can still possibly be. I'm not a, I'm not a fool. We can I don't care, but I'm confident. Yeah. So I said, uh, let's go to 15. And I said, uh, I'm going to beat you convincingly. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to play hard. Now I'm like in, but I'm still like looking at him. I'm serious. But I was burning up inside because one, I was disappointed that man, you lost it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, and then the, the insult. So he missed the first one. Allah's my witness. I think the first 13 of my shots didn't hit rim. And I was like, he was playing below one. As soon as I released it, I was called, go by him two, throw it between his leg, make he go that way, three. And I beat him 15 0, quick, sat down. When he <laughs> sat down, <clears throat> I'm sitting down next to him, and I'm still in my head, I'm still disappointed. <laughs> you, know, and, you know, and I said, I said, Malcolm, I said a few things. I said, don't ever insult me like that ever in your life again. I said, two. I said, never underestimate your opponent. You never know what a man can be holding back from you. I said, I'm out here just playing with you, going through the motion. I'm not even going at you. I'm just trying to show you what Allah has blessed me. And I said, and I said, I said, number three, 
I said, always remain humble. Mm. I said, I said, you lost sight of that. I said, you I said, you can get more in life from being humble than arrogant any day. Mm. And after that, I still trained him. But then when he approached me, he was like, Coach, I think I can get you now. I said, No, you got it. You and I never played him again. Yeah, I said, yeah, You got yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> but that, but so what your thing is, you're humble, yeah. but there's a time like, hold on, man, hold on, you don't know me like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go, put them on. We're going to see what it's going to be, make a break, do or die, let's go. <laughs> how, long, how long were you coaching him before that point, that kind of? Oh, I coached him for two, two years total, so it was probably, it was closer to the two-year mark. Really? Wow. That's what got him like, so man, you've been you all think? of this time, you've been that's wonder. Crazy. What caused you to lose? That was my next question. What prompted that thought? Like, the people he's around? His boys I, telling him, hey. You know, I don't like, know. I never asked him because he, ne he never approached me like that again. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. I think it's always, it's it, you know, when you're a child, you always want to graduate, like, from yeah. your coach. And it's, your coach is your gauge. Mm. Right? You want you want to prove to him that because of what my kids i see it was my my it was ibrahim like he's a basketball he is but he plays bo ball right and i always beat them him and yasin like i i, I like i'd never Still? no i mean like back then oh, right back like in, was, yeah yeah so like I, growing up like yeah. i would i would i never liked letting them win right, and all that right. i mean here and there but like i really beat them right right and I knew one day they will beat me yeah. so i'm like i'm just gonna like enjoy it right now <laughs> and it, it and then they're always they're always trying to beat me right and then the day came Right, and How they beat ago? me. I mean, it's been like you know, once they got a little taller and they got a little shifty, more shifty, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So the day that I remember the day that Ibrahim beat me, man, he was. I mean, that was the best day of his life, right? And and then and then he doesn't now remember at all that I used to beat him. Like he yeah, talks yeah. so much smack, and it's like oh, you know. So and it's just like it's the it's a cycle. I think it's just yeah. you know what this kid is going through is he wanted to to prove to himself that he graduated. Like yeah. he's you know um. Yeah, you know, so, so now that's know. that's the. I was thinking about. I think a lot of us know the story of Musa and Kilir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah, you know, and what what he was going through with Kilir, he realized he went through in his own life prior. Mm -hmm. And now, as I was thinking about Malcolm, that happened to me when I was young in in like fourth grade, because I always played up on the playgrounds. Mm -hmm. I was playing against high school guys. And I was always taught to be, you know, be humble and be a person of, you know, let your actions speak. And I lost my way because they started picking me up. Like, you know, when you shoot for teams, we got him. I mean, I'm literally, I'm in fourth grade and these are high schoolers. And they would give me the ball and I would go at people. So I was playing with them for so long. And at one particular day, this, this guy in 11, 12th grade, I'm giving, I'm elementary now. I'm giving him the business, and people talk trash on the court. I was never really a trash talker, but that particular day, I'm talking trash. Man, you can't guard me, <laughs> right? Because it was that it was that energy. Afterwards, he cursed me out like I've never been cursed out before in my life, <laughs> and it hurt my feelings. But I didn't want him to know it, right? And I I, mean, I remember like yesterday, man. I could tell you where I was. I, if I took you to my neighborhood, I can tell you the spot I was. We we're on our way home. And when he cursed me, I was like, man, shut up talking to me. You don't know me. But really, that's what I said outwardly. But, man, because I knew that wasn't the person I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when he walked off, he got probably to about that, that wall. Mm -hmm. I was so mad at myself. Mm -hmm. And I vowed at that moment, like right there, I said, God, from this day forward, I'm going to carry myself with humility. I'm going to let my actions speak for me. I'm not going to do this. And it's like soon as I did that, like almost immediately, just doors began to open for me that never opened before in my life. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so I, I, I think about that situation. You know what I mean? Now he's in the NBA making millions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so you just never, sometimes you, you just go through it, but you need that person that's going to pull your coat. And, and no, and I think honestly, like, not you, like, I think not let you get away with it. That's what's so unique about you, and I'm, I'm, I'm that's I'm fascinated about the most because at that age, right? Like, we, the story you just told to think like that, to mm -hmm. think that this is my fault. Mm -hmm. like, I mean, this is a, an older guy, you know, cussing you out, right? And you're like, 
you process that and you're like, you know what? I triggered this. Mm-hmm. And I and I promise I will not do that again. Like that's like man, that's yeah, yeah. I mean, my kids, I mean like I I try to get them to think like this, right? It's just so hard in, yeah, in this day yeah, and age to yeah. to get somebody to yeah. you know to think like that and to take to hold yourself responsible and to take action and say, you know what, from now on I'm not going to I'm not going to yeah. do that, you know. Yeah. By the way, in the book um you know, I was laughing. <laughs> like, there's one part that makes me crack up. Um, how you got your name? Oh, how you yeah. <laughs> when you found out that you could have picked your own name? Yeah. Like, I can you tell that, that story? <laughs> no, I, mean, I, I, I take my shahada. I go into the imam's office. It's him and it's another brother. And I say, Hey, uh, have you have you thought about a name? I said, Nah. I said, You know, you know your little few names, right? He said, well, look, I think uh, Mahmoud would be a good name for you. I said, Alhamdulillah. I said, I heard all the names are beautiful, so no problem. The other brother that was in it, it was just two of them in there. He said, hey, I think Abdul Rauf is a good name. I said, I'm not, I'm great with faces. Yeah. I'm not great with names. Yeah. But I'm back and forth in the masjid, you know, yeah. week or so, two weeks. I hear somebody referring to them, and it dawns on me. The one that gave me the name Mahmoud and the one that gave me the name Abdul Rauf, that was their names. <laughs> and they wanted me to have a piece of their name. And then they give me a book after talking about the Islamic names. And I'm going through them and I'm seeing. And the two that I, I think about a lot, that like even to this day, because I love one, the way one sounds and, and the meaning of one, because that's what I'm constantly on, like Suleiman. I like Suleiman. I like just the way it sounds, right? <laughs> And then Mujahid, oh, striver for truth. Yeah. I said, man, I would have been Mujahid. <laughs> but 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 weeks have passed, and people in the community already knew me as Mahmoud. Yeah. So I didn't want to. I said, well, we I might as well it keep it. Right now. <laughs> no, no, I know. Breaking when, news. When Mahmoud I speak, Abdurrahu, some some, some audiences I go to, I tell them, I say, hey man, if you if you see me out, you want to call me Mujahid. <laughs> No problem. Suleiman Mujahid, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, Suleiman. Suleiman Mujahid, man. That's Ahmad's name. <laughs> Subhanallah. That, that was, I was laughing, man. And he's like, they just gave him his names. <laughs> I'm like, man, y'all should have gave me that first. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's so funny. Oh, that's good. That was really good. But alhamdulillah, you know, I think, uh, you know, one, I think names are, it's from Allah, man. Like, oh, you know, absolutely. it's like you, we don't choose our names. Subhanallah. It's yeah, just, it Allah. just, they just come. It's amazing because, my last son, he's, he's eight. He's going to turn nine tomorrow. Like His name is Muhammad. And I did not want to name any of my kids Muhammad because you put Muhammad anywhere and there's like 20 Muhammads and it's always a problem, which Muhammad this and right. And I was like, I just don't want him to go through that. And I'm deciding um, what to name him. And then my mother-in-law, she has a dream. It's like you had a boy and his name is Muhammad. I was like, all right, yes, sir. Muhammad it is, man. <laughs> Done, right? Like, so it's just like, subhanAllah, and you hear all these stories about people, like parents wanted to name this, and then this person comes to know you're naming them that, and then you just, it's yeah, like yeah, everybody yeah. comes with their name, subhanAllah, you know? So I think your name came with you, man. That's, you are Mahmoud Abdul Rauf, and, and it true, truly an embodiment of that, on those attributes, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. You still know those two brothers? Are they still around? <laughs> Mahmoud and Abdul Rauf, <laughs> like the, the OGs. <laughs> I don't know, because it, it was in Denver. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so. That'd be interesting to find them and mm-hmm. just chat with It's them. like my younger brother. His, he was named. We didn't grow up as Muslims. Uh-huh. So he his, my mother gave him the name Omar. But he gave, she gave him, not because of Islam. Yeah. My aunt's favorite actor was Omar Sharif. Omar Sharif. Omar Sharif. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. That's cool. <laughs> and he's the one who ended up being a Muslim too, right? Oh, he did. I didn't know that. See, look at the name, bro. I'm telling you, man. Like, these names. Because you... Actually, like you're calling a person by that name for for their life, mm-hmm. so they end up embodying that quality, whether you like it or not. So the names are big deal, man. Like naming people is a big deal. Yeah. Sometimes. Know? I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, the prophet used to change people's names, right? When they come and his name is Harb, like you know, war. Like, no, no, your peace. Your name is not war. You know, your peace. Mashallah, mashallah. Yeah. We got like five or so minutes for the sake of time. Okay, cool. We'll get you back for what time drama. is it? It's twelve thirty. Is it? Yeah. Oh, so dude, we, we gotta, gotta start go, wrapping yeah. up here. Yeah, yeah, we gotta wrap up. So, okay. if you have any last minute uh, thoughts? Um, or I, I had actually, and yeah, I was remember also in the book you mentioned that this person that 
uh, like you used to hang out with when you were like you're already in, in the NBA at the time. You're a big shot, but you, your best friend was this. Was he like a, a janitor or a construction worker or something? The person that you guys became Muslim together. Oh no 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 no. Uh, uh, Mark James. He was like a protege of this Catholic priest. Catholic is priest, right? Not pastor. Priest. And, I, I, yeah. I anyway, know. yeah. He. Uh, he. Uh, we became close because that's that. That was at a time when I hadn't decided yet. Mm-hmm. You know, I was still searching. Uh, and it's, Islam came up in conversation. Yeah, yeah. He's the one who told you about the the, Quran. the, the Muslim brother. Up. Well, yeah. he had a Muslim brother at the airport. We can go to the mansion. Yeah, yeah. That's Mark James out of New York. <laughs> and now I told him, I said, "Look, man, uh, we went and picked up the Quran, came back two, three pages. I looked across the table. I said, man, I don't know about you. My search is over. And it's like I've never felt that before." And because I had a lot of questions, mm. and oftentimes when I would ask questions about Christianity and people couldn't answer, I would get two answers. You just have to believe and you can't question God. Mm. I'm like, man, no, God, it has to be an answer. Mm. And so when whatever I read, that I can't remember what I read, but I remember to this day, like, the feeling, and it's never left me. Yeah. It was 100% I knew. You know, if you've ever just, like, like that intuition, this is for this is it. Mm. And I said, man, is it? And then I started going to the masjid, and there was a janitor there. Mm. He's still living. I found out he was sick because I just came back from Denver some mm. days ago. But he was technically my first teacher. Subhanallah. Because I would go to the masjid, and I would sit with him and ask him questions. You know, and then one thing led to another. Uh, and then after my first year that summer, I ended up embracing, I think, in August, taking my child yeah, that's fine. That was beautiful too. I love that. Alhamdulillah. I have one more question, but I guess we'll just keep it for hmm. tonight. I guess. <laughs> oh, yeah, <my> <laughs> Or hmm. or should we? No, we can close let me, it off. Let me. Okay, so I had a huge discussion with my one my eldest son, mm-hmm. right? Um, and we are completely at disagreement, and I want to know your opinion on this because he always felt that you know you standing up right for your principles right and not wanting to stand for the flag all of that like he he felt it was honorable it's it's great but he just felt like this is you right it's not mandatory like you know and and in his mind he thinks like well mahmoud could have done a lot more better for the community for everybody if he would have just stood up for a flag like what's a big deal you know like Mm -hmm. And obviously, I mean, we had long discussions. I disagree <laughs> with him, but I, I just tell him, I was like, I'm going to talk to Mahmoud about this. I yeah. want to ask him, like, yeah. what, do, what do you think? You know, where, where do you, you know, what, what would you tell him, you know? Ooh, that, this, that, this could be a long conversation. It all depends on um, Allahu Alam first and foremost. Um, we know the famous hadith. If you see it wrong, change it with change. If you can't, right, we already know. So we have choices. Um, To say could have did better, only Allah knows that. Um, I think you mentioned something, the phrase you mentioned for this is him. We don't have, what's the phrase that he didn't have to? Yeah, like like he. To to a degree, yes and no. We don't have to, but we do have to. You know what I mean? We, We have to take these positions especially when it's become normalized to the point where because we do things oftentimes and we do things and and uh as muslims we want to put thought in what we do everything we do even if it's smiling that could be an act of worship Mm -hmm. so i remember what what erin dotty roy said she says once you see something you can't unsee it Mm -hmm. to be silent Mm -hmm. to say nothing is just as political an act as speaking out either way you're accountable. You know, so now it doesn't mean you have to do it that way. But are you what are you doing to combat you know this right here? So if you're not then no you got to be you know you don't have to do what I did, but you got to be doing something. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right? So it all depends on No, I mean know, and and it's yeah. like that's basically what I I I share with them. I mean it's about the moment 
like you are not standing up for the flag for months, even for a whole almost a year before it broke out. I remember yeah. I was And they brought it they brought it to me. They brought it to you. I remember I, I was I, I, I was welcomed it. I was following you back. Not then. that I wouldn't have. Yeah, yeah. But but a law's timing, man. So plans and a law plan. I, I told you. So I, I'm 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 reading, I'm studying, I'm still trying to I knew that okay, no. No, no, no. Yeah. But I'm still trying to understand the world around me more. Yeah. But sometimes, and this is what I tell people too, I say, this is what I say to people. If we, that that could have, I really believe that was, that was a law's way yeah. of like, listen, let, let me go ahead and not rush, let me rush this thing. Mm. Because sometimes if we as human beings, we can read a lot and end up falling in love with words, yeah. but not we, we don't follow it up yep. with nothing. And we feel some kind of like, yeah, I know this and I've studied this. And we feel like that's major activism. Yes. <laughs> right. Yes. And so sometimes a law, you know, like a lot of people, like they'll go to school and say, well, you know, I want to learn everything I can. I want to I want to learn everything before I do this. That's almost going to you never going to know everything. If you have that philosophy, that's all, all almost always going to assure you that you're not going to do anything. So my philosophy, whatever you have, even if it's the smallest act upon it and a law show you the rest. So that I, I believe that that was Allah's way of bringing them to me. Say, so, you know what? You playing. I'm going to bring it to you so you can address it and so you can deal with this thing. You know? I, I, and, I, and, and I say, alhamdulillah. You, you know, know, like they say, one of my teachers said that on the day of judgment, you're judged on, the, on your truth, not on the ultimate truth. Like, you know, that thing you put in the scale in, the, in between the balances, like, it's not the ultimate truth. It's your truth, right? Mm. And and your intuitive knowledge, that's your knowledge, right? What you felt at that moment, you know. From your experience. From your experience. Your experience that's that's Allah's knowledge to you. And he's testing you. What are you going to do about it, right? I mean, my son is having a different experience now. It's easy for him maybe to, to like, project. Like, that's the thing about us. Like, we... We think we know each other. We think we understand. And when you finally start, <laughs> like, oh, I didn't know you would. That was your experience. Yeah. I can understand now why Absolutely, you did. Absolutely, right? What you did. And it's and that's why like this, it's easy to judge, right? It's so easy to project. It's so easy, and it's like, man, look, man, you, you know, I know this person, and I know that at that moment, what he did was the right thing. You, you man, this is powerful because, and I'm always trying to leave grace. Just like you said, you never know what a person's experience is, what their thinking is based upon those experiences. And even sometimes, depending on the audience when I'm speaking, and if it comes up, I say, listen, not everybody's going to be giving speeches, leading protests, mm -hmm. and you don't have to. I think there's a verse in Quran that alludes to, may Allah forgive me for not remembering verbatim, that, in other words, I'm just paraphrasing, Everybody can't be doing the same thing because what's going to happen, you know what I mean, yeah. all these other things that need to be done. So, and it's not necessary that everybody have to be leading protests to be giving major speeches. Some people got wealth that they can fund these mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. secretly. Yeah. That's activism. Absolutely. And they go to work every day. You don't know it. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. But that's how things continue. Right. Right. Some people... They're writing under aliases, right. but it's getting out because maybe they don't have the heart, you know what I mean, to, to say yeah, they're not. Yeah. Allah knows their condition, right. but they're doing something. Absolutely. They're doing something. It's an alias. Who is this right? But people are listening. It's having an influence. Right. right. right? So, but the key is do something. Yeah. And Absolutely. don't knock the person that Absolutely. stood. Right. Just like for the people that are standing, don't look at, what do you do? You don't know what he's doing. Yeah. Or she question and ask yeah. then they might tell you something that you know you know a lot so like, oops make you make you feel stupid yeah like uh oh you know and I, and, and i think <laughs> i mean i i no, I, I completely agree with you and i think it's the amazing thing about this regardless of the choices right and we might disagree on that let's assume mm -hmm. i mean even though i don't but it's the willingness to leave it all for the sake of your principles, yeah. it's it's the it's there's nothing more amazing than that, right? Like, yeah. you 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 hold your ground, and that's what Malcolm did. 
That's what the Prophet Sallallahu did. That's what everybody who has, who, who, you know, prophets, you know, like, hey, this is what I stand for. I don't care what happens. That's why I'm, that's, you know, this is, this is my calling. And, and then Allah shows you, man. Like, I mean, alhamdulillah, like we're living it now, like yeah. 20, 30 years later yeah. that Allah is honoring you, alhamdulillah, right now. Yeah. Um, he always has. Allah, Even Allah. If the so we don't, we don't see, see it. it. We didn't see it. Public. We just didn't see it. <laughs> You, you know, every, every, every day, man, and I know it sounds cliche, but I, I believe this. Every day that Allah gives us, man, is an, look, is an opportunity to get better, you know, regardless. Allah says, do you think just by saying you are committed, you won't be tested? So this is a part, if, if the prophet, if this message was so strong, it almost broke his back, as the Quran say. He struggled more than anybody, and we say, oh, we love the prophet, we want to follow in his footsteps. This is part and parcel of it. Now, don't look. Yeah, it doesn't mean don't own the fact, embrace the fact that it hurts, that it's painful. Did he did he want to go through being stoned at Taif? No, no. no. Yeah. But once it happens, I understand. Yeah, look, yeah. this is this is part and parcel of the mission. You know, Allah, I'm I'm going I'm going. Please allow me to be grateful for to you and thank you. The same or more. If I'm going through hardships or if you blessing me. Yeah. Let me stay, you know, it's hard. I, I, there's no question. This is hard. Who wants to do that? Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> but the truth has to mean more to you than all of that. You know, I say, you know what, man, if, if, if I say you who I want to follow, I ain't perfect. None of us are. But I got to embrace this just, I, just like I embrace when you send me a obvious, because that's a blessing too. That's right. Allah said he wants to favor those who are being oppressed and to make them leaders. Right. There's, there's, there's blessings in hardships. That's right. It creates character possibilities where the absence of it don't. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, so say, hey, and everywhere Allah says he's going to send you a challenge or t a test, he always reinforces it. Most surely will I try you through hunger, love, love. But give good news to those who are patient for when they're confronted yeah, with right. They say, with difficulty comes ease. ease. I'm not going to give you hardship you can't bear. Yeah, yeah. He's always re <laughs> So when it's hit me, hold on, Allah, you ain't giving me this to break my back. Look, man, look, all the stuff I got to be grateful for. My eyes, my boom, 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 boom. I got a chance. Yeah. Da, 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 I got my... I'm always trying to reinforce it with something good. And I don't mean it ain't hard. Yeah, you know? yeah. But I'm like, no, no, no. And that keeps you balanced. You don't go on a deep so, end and thinking about, well, I got to kill myself. Or, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, yeah, seriously, yeah, because yeah, that's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never in the history of this nation, I don't think, where we have... I don't think it's ever been in the history of this world. We've had so many young people right with mental right health issues and yeah. want to commit suicide yeah you know it's because we that 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 balance we going to deep end with you know why why no 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 understand what struggles are for right <laughs> mm, understand that that balance there's a guy who was a story and I'm going to end with this he was walking taking his son and I don't know if it was true or not it's been so long since I read it he was he, his son had passed and his understanding of death and life was and he was taking his son to bury him. He was had a smile on his face. People in the man, what you smiling for, man? Your son is dead. This ain't a smiling, this ain't a time to be smiling. He looks at him. <laughs> he said, he was never mine to begin with. Subhan Allah Allah. gave him to me as a loan. I enjoyed him. But, but we all gonna have our day. Subhan you know what I mean? He said, yeah. you know, so he was his understanding that it doesn't mean that we don't Allah gives us permission to mourn. Yeah, yeah. Mm, right. But he was like, hey. He was never mine to begin with. Subhan. Allah gave him to me as a loan. I, I'm grateful to Allah for these moments. Much. I was like, wow. That's amazing. That's, that's, <laughs> that's truly understanding the world and, and yeah. the the purpose behind it, you know? Yeah, it's mashallah, like, subhanAllah. Mashallah. All right. Let's, yeah, yeah, this can go on forever. I know, yeah, yeah, no, I know. Yeah, 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 get hey, you back. Mashallah. Do you want to end with the dua? Yeah, let's, let's, let's end with the dua, inshallah. Yeah. Hey, Mahmoud, it's a, it's a pleasure. It was a pleasure, yeah, man, pleasure, chatting. Man. And I can talk for hours, but uh, may Allah reward you, man, for your time. All of us are. Yeah. Um, يا الله الذي لا إله إلا أنت أحد يا فرد يا صمد يا من لم يتخذ صاحبة ولا ولد ولم يكن له كفن أحد يا الله we ask you you're the one the only the master sustainer nourisher creator developer maintainer you could see us you could hear us you're the acceptor of du'a we ask you Allah to send your peace and salawat and salutations of my prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم we ask you Allah to give us your love and the love of your book and the love of prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and your prophet 
We ask Allah to guide us to a straight path, make us among al-muhsineen. We ask Allah to make us Rabbanis, godly in everything that we do. We ask Allah to give us the love of the Qur'an, make us recite the Qur'an, understand the Qur'an, reflect mm -hmm. upon the words of the Qur'an and implement the Qur'an and make us a walking Qur'an. Yeah. We ask Allah to forgive all our shortcomings. We ask Allah to give us a good ending and to make the last words we are be la ilaha illallah. To make our grace be a garden of jinn and not pit from hell. Ya Allah, we ask you to guide our youth back to your deen. Give them your love. We ask Allah to cure anyone that is ill from our community. Ya Allah, make them well, make them um, healthy, remove their pain. Ya Allah, we ask you to uh, bless and uh, forgive anyone that passed away from our community. Rahman Rahim. Allahumma rizuqna qabla al mawti tawbah wa inda al mawti shahada wa ba'da al mawti naim al abdiya. And finally, ya Allah, we ask Allah to bless uh, Mahmoud. Ya Allah, put baraka in everything that he does. Ya Allah, mm -hmm. put baraka in his offspring, his family, his health. Ya Allah, please, uh, you know, uh, expand his voice. Let it reach everywhere in the world, yeah, every, all the corners of the world. Ya Allah, we ask also to bless Bamrak for everything that they do. Ya Allah, we ask you to submit before them your wealth and your power and make them use it to become close to you, to increase and, and make this world a better place. Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. Ameen. As-salamu alaykum. Thank you.